This is the unofficial Brian May Signature SG. Not that Brian May has ever famously used an SG. But welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We're going back to my favorite Henry Juskowitz era year 2018. The beginning of the end for the company where they produced so many cool, strange models. It pretty much helped launch my channel, and I just have a real soft spot in my heart for this time period. Today, we're taking a look at a solid guitar that's not too out there, but special enough that it's unique. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the Gibson SG Bohemian. That's right, Bohemian Rhapsody SG. That's the reason why I call this the Brian May signature guitar. But to be clear, this has no affiliation with Brian or Queen. But look at this thing. This is known as Sage Green. It's such a unique color. And that's pretty much the claim to fame to this series is all the unique colors. Because if you're not familiar with what the word bohemian means, it means you're socially unconventional in an artistic way. So to help you be artistic, you have five finishes. Spice, sunshine, mink, sage, and blue sky. Now spice, it just kind of looks like your regular SG. It's reddish. Maybe it looks different in person, but that one has really never made me too excited. And then sunshine, in the stock photos, it looks yellow, right? But in person, it just looks like a faded red SG. So again, not all that special. Mink brown, from far away, it just kind of looks like a brown SG. But when you really get up close to it, I have started to appreciate that finish the more and more I've looked at it, because it kind of reminds me of walnuts. But then the two big Big Mac daddies, in my opinion. Sage, which is a cool green color. We're going to see that all day today. And then my favorite is Blue Sky. It's blue. Do I need to say any more? <laughs> Hit me up if you're planning on selling one of those. I definitely plan on at least getting my three favorite colors out of this for my own personal collection, so we'll have to see if those other ones vary in the future. So naturally, these are being based off of 61 Custom Shop SGs. However, what made these unique is the fact that they utilize underwound custom bucker pickups known as the Super 74 set. You don't see Gibson use that set of pickups too often anymore. The other thing that makes these fancy is the fact that we have stock Grover tuners, which was a very common modification back in the day to replace your Clusons with Grovers for better tuning stability. So these guys just started off with them. As we just learned, these were birthed in 2018. Gibson made 100 of these Bohemian SGs, but unfortunately, finding them on the used market today is a little bit tricky because unless you know the specs, you're not going to know it's a Bohemian because for some strange reason, they didn't actually put the title in the COA booklet. They just called them either LPSG standards or SG standards, depending which one you're looking at. So to boil it all down, they're fancy colored SGs that have slightly different pickups. Not the craziest thing we've seen on the show, but the cool name makes them memorable to me. But to learn more about this Bohemian, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside our little green friend here. More bad news. I was hoping these Super 74 pickups would have a very clear identification mark on them, and they don't. They just say patent applied for. Somebody could easily confuse those for custom buckers. Somebody might even think they're 57 classics. I was really hoping we'd have some sort of a sticker. So if you're looking for one of these Bohemian SGs, just look for a 2018 Custom Shop SG because somebody might list it and they don't even know it's a Bohemian because it's not in the COA. Pickups aren't labeled. It's not written in the pickup cavity anywhere bohemian so it makes me wonder did they just make a custom shop creation of 100 interestingly finished sgs and then have to name it something afterwards that's what it really feels like but we can see our long neck tenon construction here it ends right there and you can see our maple block capping off our truss rod and then this is just buffing compound there is the rest of the bridge pickup cavity but let's see what our underwound pickups read 7.33 in the bridge position neck position 7.34 and middle 3.69 But these are historic SGs, meaning you've got your ABR1 bridge that is drilled directly into the top, no studs within the body. Here's what our ABR1 bridge looks like. It's branded as such. And then next we get a lightweight aluminum tailpiece that also has the light aging to it. As far as our controls, very basic. Just two volumes, two tones, output jack on the front, three-way toggle switch. I'm not really digging the amber switch tip on this. I think I'd prefer black. But here's what it looks like with our pick guard off, as well as our tenon cover off. The cover itself is just one ply, and it's black, but the pick guard is multi-ply. It looks like we've got five layers here. 
About a week ago, we had documented the sunken treasure, Les Paul, and I told you they came in green and a natural one. This is kind of the finish that I was hoping those ones would have had. They just came out so dark. So it's nice to have kind of what I was looking for on that guitar within this SG, because I just love green guitars. They have a very interesting vibe, especially when you can still see that awesome wood grain. And this one, it actually turns red at certain angles. The wood reflects it in a different way. So that's why I do want to see all the other colors in person, because maybe they just look boring in stock photos, but in person they have a cool color change effect. But this guitar definitely looks a little bit more red from this angle as compared to over here. Now I've got the nickel hardware and these did come stock from the factory with a VOS paint job, which means they make it a nice glossy finish, but then they slather it in something that just makes it look like it's a little bit more worn in. And that's the effect that you got right there. So some of this haziness, that is part of the VOS job. But what's bad about having VOS guitars is if you get little smudges like this from setup, if you clean that, you're going to lose the VOS-ness. So I just decided to leave this one alone because if I polish it up, it's not going to have the exact same vibe. But moving on from our mahogany body, we've got the mahogany neck with a true rosewood fretboard. This color of the rosewood board pairs really well with this finish. We've got the acrylic trapezoid inlays running up and down the neck. And for our historic spec, we have the tortoiseshell colored side marker inlays instead of black, all paired with 22 medium jumbo frets with a 12 inch fretboard radius and a 24 three quarter inch scale length and neck dimensions with a nylon nut of 1.7 inches, which increases to 2.08 by the 12th with a first fret neck depth of 0.84 and only 0.93 by the 12th. These are very thin necks, which I'm kind of sad about because I really like fat SG necks, but this does have a nice roundedness to it. It's not that really overly wide SG neck that's ultra thin. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Moving on to our headstock here, nothing too fancy. You've just got a Gibson Mother of Pearl logo with the crown, and maybe this is what somebody was talking about online. They don't have a aged headstock face, which I did read online that somebody said that was another special feature of the Bohemian SGs, but to be honest, I haven't paid enough attention to custom shop SGs to know if these are the only ones that didn't get the slightly tinted lacquer. Another cool historic spec is we actually have a Hollywood veneer. That's why there's a lighter green color right around the headstock. It's not binding. That's just the Hollywood being a lighter color. I forgot to point that out on that Mahogany Explorer we documented a couple of days ago too. But the tuners have similar aging as the rest of the hardware. Kind of strange that they wouldn't tint the lacquer when <laughs> everything else has kind of been aged a bit. But our truss rod is in perfect shape on this one, thankfully. And we get our fancy Les Paul truss rod cover. I love these things with the wide beveled edge of the white. Moving on to the back, I decided I had to clean it back here. If you take a look at some of the B-roll shots, you can see it had this weird residue and it looked like it had a whole bunch of scratches in the back. And around the strap buttons, there were circles. But all that was just in the VOS layer and that was bugging me because I just prefer my guitars to look a little cleaner than that. But hey, the cleaning job helped bring out the chatoint effect of our wood here. Which, by the way, looks like that when you clean some of it off. And not that I'm planning on selling this guitar, but just to document the condition, you do have a couple of nicks and dings on the back. There's another ding right there. And our strap buttons are non-original. So I was told the originals were in the case, but no, those were Gibson USA style strap buttons. Like the big, large kind. So I just put regular ones on here. They don't have the same VOS aging as everything else, but they look a little bit more stock than those shallers that were on here. But here's where our control cavity looks like. Standard custom shop pots with bumblebee caps. Unfortunately, no Bohemian branding in here either. Here's what the back plate looks like itself. Glossy on the outside, matte on the inside. And now, hey, just in case you didn't know, historic SGs are constructed a little bit differently. The body actually hugs up to the heel of the neck. So right here, the lighter shade of green is actually the body, and then the darker shade starts our neck. So it's kind of like a Carina Flying V or Explorer as far as construction goes. That's something you only get out of the custom shop though. This whole slight red color change effect reminds me of some of the demo shop model guitars that they took a red one, sanded it down, and then shot it a different color but this one is factory stock this way. That neck really does that red change effect that I was talking about earlier. But here we have our aged Grover tuners on the outside and our serial number 808042. I would love to find 080808 because it might exist on a Bohemian SG. But here you can see the wings of the headstock are a slightly different color because the wood is that of a different color of the neck. Similar to the phenomenon we saw down there. But all said and done, it weighs 6 pounds, 6.4 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this green SG sounds.
74 pickups are very interesting. The neck pickup is very dark sounding. It's almost like the tones rolled off on it, but it's not. Got a good roundedness to it. But the bridge in comparison is like extra hot despite being underwound. Gives you a combination of that. And that carries over to the distorted position as well. It's got a very airiness to it. pickups would sound really good together at a phase. All said and done, what do I think about the Bohemian SG? It's a nice guitar, sounds great, but the neck dive ruins it. It might be incredibly light, but my back hurts supporting the neck of this thing. Now, of course, there's ways to get around that, adding weights in the back and all that other shenanigans. But other than that, it is a very interesting SG, but you've got tons of custom shop offerings to choose from. I don't think you necessarily need to hunt down a Bohemian unless you just happen to really like one of the colors. And I think that's exactly what this series has going for it. It's a little bit unique in the color options, and hey, at least it has a little bit going for it as far as unique specs otherwise, but it's nothing too crazy. I mean, if you want a really crazy SG, go check out one of the SG Elegants, because those things are fancy. But Droglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out my new Sage Bohemian SG as part of my personal collection today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.